As you may know, we use a fold-out solar panel on our boat, and we mainly use that just to buy us a couple of extra days when we're at anchor. The solar panel came with a small charge controller, which allows you to connect the solar panel straight to your boat's battery, or to output charge to USB or another 12 volt device. For some time, I've been wondering if it's worth upgrading this charge controller to a MPPT controller. So first of all, what are the differences between a cheaper charge controller, which is normally PWM and MPPT, and what do these terms actually mean? So a pulse width modulating controller or PWM controller is basically like a smart switch. What it'll do at some point during that charge cycle is start to switch on and off very, very quickly so that it doesn't overcharge your battery. So how does that work actually in practice? So here's our setup. We've got a solar panel, a charge controller and a 12 volt battery. We've been using a few electronics on the boat and our battery now is at 12.5 volts. We plug in the solar that starts out at 18 volts until the solar controller connects the two together and drags the solar panels down to 12.5. The panel's now trying to lift the voltage of the battery as it charges, but in doing that, the 180 watt panel that we had at the start is no longer 180 watts because it's not delivering at its maximum voltage. As the battery starts to charge, obviously this will all improve, but depending on how large your battery bank is, it could take a long time before you're getting the maximum amount of performance out of your solar panel. So can things be improved? So just to be clear, this is not a brand thing, but the MPPT controller works in a different way. It doesn't directly connect the panels to the battery. It's able then to let the voltage of the solar panel change very, very slightly and get more out of the solar panel, which in turn charges your battery faster and allows the panel to reach its maximum performance level. So does that all work in practice? Let's find out. There's not really an ideal place to place the solar panels on our boat because wherever you put them, there's either the angle is incorrect or there's a little bit of shading on the panel. I have tended to see um, the top end of three, maybe four amps out of this setup. So that just set, sets some sort of expectation as to what we're gonna achieve. So conditions on the day weren't quite as perfect as what you've just seen. However, they were fairly stable. So I was able to test the panels and get a really good understanding of how each controller performed. And as you can see here, there's a slight difference between them, but it's not huge. Hopefully you've also noticed that the voltage of the panel isn't directly linked with the battery as seen on the left hand side. So I've just got the solar panels rigged up actually in the dinghy, just to try and get rid of all of the shade. Um, and obviously you can just see what I've just recorded. That's, that's the output of them at the moment using the um, Victron uh, Smart um, Solar Controller. I don't know if it's any better, if I'm honest. I think it's, it's roughly the same. Um, I'm sure in certain parameters, obviously, it's going to get a little bit more, but it's not a massive difference. What is nice about it, though, is that you can um, get all of the data off it, so you know exactly how much yield you've had per day and things like that. Um, and it does seem to tolerate uh, shade better. So when the pan one of the panels is shaded, so if you get some shade on one of your panels um, or the uh, sun uh, goes in and you get cloudy weather, it does seem to tolerate that a lot better than the cheap one. Um, but other than that, there's not very much in it, if I'm completely honest. So um, it's just up to you whether uh, you want that extra information and also you want the ability to add more panels. That's what it does give you because obviously it can go up to 75 volts where these panels only are really about 15 to 18 so, you know, you, you've, you've got a lot of capacity there. The good thing about this setup is that I've got another 100 watt one. So what I am going to do is when that's not in there, I'm actually going to charge the outboard engine. So I can charge the outboard with um, a, a set of panels um, and a 12 volt solar charge controller that um, I bought with the outboard itself. Um, so that you can plug a panel into. So now I've got two panels. One can charge the boat batteries and one can top up that little outboard battery on there which is quite good. A little later, I tried connecting both panels to the charge controller to see what difference that would make. And I connected them both in series and parallel, and I found that parallel was a lot better in my case. So none of these conditions really were ideal for the tests, but it just actually shows more of a real world example of actually what you're gonna get out of these kind of panels. So I've just put together a little bit of a bodge down here so that I can actually wire two panels together. So they are in parallel. So here's the, the wire coming into the, the solar charge controller because we've got a lot more capacity now on the charge controller. 
can actually wire the two panels together. So this one, this one's got a cable, so it's a bit easier. This one's just been budged with some wires shoved in the end, but it's working. So I'll show you in a second the power output. Um, we're getting about five, six amps out of it at the moment, so that's pretty good. So switching back over to the app, you can see that obviously we're generating a lot more power here. The voltage is around the same because the panels are in parallel. They're not going one through to the other. Um, so that doesn't increase the voltage, but it does increase the current output. And as you can see here, we're hitting, hitting around 70 uh, watts of power that's been generated. So around five amps, which is really quite good. And that's about the most I, I saw um, during our tests. I suppose the question is, would the money have been spent better on more panels or better quality panels? And the answer is probably yes. I still do think that the Victron kit is really, really good. I'm very happy that I've got it and I'll show some ways of connecting that into the Raspberry Pi because there's some options now that you can actually Bluetooth across to it. So I'll show that shortly. It definitely works better in cloudier conditions. The panels don't drop out quite as much as they do with the cheaper controller but there definitely isn't 70 to 80 pounds worth of um, enhancements just in the charge controller. So I think if I was, if I got my time again, I would probably buy more panels first. So now that I have got this controller, I thought it would be a good idea to actually integrate that with my other monitoring systems on board the boat. And one development recently has been the way that you can extract this data from the Victron kit using Bluetooth. What's also nice is that Victron actively work with the community and they've made this process slightly easier by including these credentials within the app. So I'll show you now how to get them. So on your signal case setup, remember to be logged in before you'll get the menu on the left. You need to head over to the app store and you also need to be connected to the internet. You're looking for the application Victron Instant Data over BLE. Get that installed, enable it and then click on to add the parameters that you're going to need from your Bluetooth app. So here's the information that you need and the starter bit might not be relevant, it just depends on the product. How you get this information is you go across to the Victron app as long as it was updated from around August time 2023 and you click product info and now in product info it will now display the key and the MAC address of the device so you can just simply copy that and paste it in. As long as Bluetooth is enabled on your Raspberry Pi it should start to pull the data in. You don't need to use the Bluetooth app and connect that to the Victron kit, it does it automatically in the background and then you can configure your favourite dashboard and log the data how you would do normally. So I hope that's been useful, a little bit of a run through of the different types of solar charge controllers and a bit of experience as to what we've seen with ours. Obviously we'll carry on testing this and see if we can improve things at all. If you've got any comments please leave them below and we'll see you next time.